Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Ernesto. I appreciate that. It blessed me. Um, it's awesome. It's just an awesome reminder. You know, we're all coming out of uh, Resurrection Sunday, which I hope it was awesome. It was amazing. Uh, to God be glorified. It's like it's like to, uh, today uh, you got some power. It's like today you got some endurance and some peace. You should have it. Hey, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, it was a, hey, this week, hey, we talked about Holy Week, right? And we talked about everything that God was going to do. And it was like it was a week that all hell broke loose on me and my family. It was like attack after attack. It was like problem after problem. But you know what I kept going back to? Jesus got me. Jesus, you died for this. Jesus, you took your lashes on your back for this. God, God Jesus, you, 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 you thought about me when you were going on that cross. Jesus, you were hung for me. And it kept reverting me back to there. And it kept my peace. It kept my peace. And then when we got to uh, Resurrection Sunday, and, uh, man, it was just like I got my strength. I got my joint. I got my endurance back. I love what Ernesto said. He said, man, if it's just that thread, hold on to that thread tightly. Endurance means this. And when, when, you, when you break down endurance and you understand endurance, endurance means it's not saying that you're going to have this extra boost of power or the second win or the second strength. You know what it is? The extra, that, that endurance that we pray for is to just keep on holding on. God, give me, God, give, just keep, keep, just let me hold on now. Just let me hold on, God. Just keep me close. Keep me close. I just need to stay close to your cross. Holy Spirit, comfort me. Like it's not something that it's supernatural and it's awesome and it's, and it's amazing, but it's just, it's just that prayer. It's like, God, just keep, let me hold on still. I don't want to let go. I don't want to give up. I don't want to throw in the towel. So endurance is something that's beautiful. Everybody, God bless y'all. I love y'all. Um, as we come into this Bible study, the topic is old to new. Old to new. We're going to be talking about restoration. Old to new. Um, anybody who's on here that has the Zoom link, do me a favor. Share it with somebody. Uh, share the Zoom link with somebody. Post it on your Facebook. Uh, the flyer's on mine. If you ever want the flyer to share, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll send you the flyer if you want to share the flyer on your social media. I know a lot of people do share it already, but if you want to just to share with the Zoom link, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, as well, too, if you're on Facebook and you're tuning in from Facebook, God bless you. I won't be able to see the comments right now, but I love you. And just know I'll go back and read them. Uh, if you're going to share it, share it with somebody, man. Invite a friend. Uh, get on the stream uh, from Twitch. God bless y'all on YouTube. God bless you. Uh, man, let's just continue to, to glorify God and, 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 and move in the spirit of excellence with everything that we're doing. The enemy thought he was going to get the technology today, but he is bound up in the name of Jesus. And he is not going to get it. That we're going to press through and we are going to all get this word together i promise you i'm not gonna be for you long i promise you now don't just be like that that's what that's what you say all the time that's what all that's all uh uh uh, uh people who are about to preach i promise you i'm not i got i got four things that i'm gonna go over i got four things i promise you and i'm not gonna be long but if the holy spirit got something else to say we're gonna let the holy spirit do the holy spirit amen 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 uh let me see as we get going everything looks good everything look good let me see give me a second All right. For the uh, for the meantime, I'm gonna take these off, y'all, and then we're gonna get back. Amen. Amen. Old to new, old to new. The first scripture is Joel two, twenty five and twenty six. Old to new. Old to new. Joel 2, Joel chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. Oh, as well, too. Just quick, quick. Um, y'all do me a favor. Y'all keep Brother Brian lifted. He's not feeling his best. I'm sure you'll probably see his name inside here, but um, he's battling a stomach bug or a virus that's going on really quick. So y'all, y'all keep him lifted. Uh, we pray complete healing and restoration over his body and over his health. So um, just so y'all know, uh in your prayer time and in your prayer closet, just uh, send up a prayer for him. He's the pastor over this ministry. Um, he's the leader over this ministry. He's one of my mentors, one of my leaders in my life. So definitely want to uh, make sure that we're covering him in prayer. So, Old to New, Joel chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. It says this, and I will com uh, compensate you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten up. The creeping locust the stripping locusts, and the groaning locusts. My great army which I sent among you, you have plenty to eat 
and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame. I love this scripture. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, well, one of my one, one of my top scriptures. I love because it talks about man. Who has over the years, and I'm, I'm gonna kind of bounce to something else really quick, but I'm gonna bounce right back to this. Who over the years have has owned something of of value, right? Um, if it's a car, art. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but I used to love co collecting uh, the uh, the wrestling action figures. All the wrestlers, man. I had all of the wrestlers, bro. Hey, you could not beat me in the wrestling category. Right? Stone Cold, Undertaker. I had them all, man. Uh, but I had it, and I had it. I, I, I had a crazy collection, right? Some people now are is shoes, right? Clothes, jewelry, um, just stuff. I'm, I'm I'm not talking about like no kind of level of vanity. I'm not talking about no kind of level of idolatry. I'm talking about just like you know, pure intentions on on having something that is of value, right? And um. Have you ever seen it? I don't know if you have something from your childhood, right? But it's 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 not the same anymore. It's not the same anymore, right? Have y'all ever seen a car that is like a classic car and um it's no longer what it once it was uh it's no longer visually nice as it once looked at probably because we're talking about let's talk about like a 67 chevy impala or something like that right whatever it may be these these are the old school body things a lot of them got rust damage right now right a lot of them uh uh, uh have dents different colors different parts all kinds of different stuff uh the, the the parts inside are no longer what they were originally they're parts from AutoZone and o'reilly and this place and we're just trying to get it together because it's something that we want and we want to restore right we know we restore old things to make them new again right and the reason that you restore the old things is because stuff has taken place that has rotten it out that has rusted it out that has stained it, that has broken it, that has dented it, that has damaged it in some kind of way. And a lot of the times, what do you think restoration needs to start at when, when, when you're talking about restoration art, restoration of, uh, of cars, restoration of certain things? A lot of the things start with the interior. It starts with the interior of it. Because if it's, if it's art, you have to make sure that this art is going to be able to be sturdy enough to build on it, Right? You got you to start with the inner things. You got to start with the most important functions, right? With a car, 90% uh, of the 99.9% uh, of the time, right? The, the, the interior and the upholstery is going to be messed up in the inside. The top is falling off. The seats are all broken up, right? Uh, the, the AC things don't work no more. Uh, you have to you have a plier to start the car. It's like a whole bunch of stuff that's happening in the inside, right? So the restoration starts inside. Because if you could get the inside going right, that's all that matters because the outside stuff you could begin to work on and fix later, right? So the restoration process with these cars is that when we fix the inside and then we worry about the outside, all of the dents, all of the rust, all of the um, all, all of the damage that has taken place, all the electrical parts and stuff that is going on with the engine, we start attacking it piece by piece, right? And I'm sorry if you could hear that right now. They wilding outside. But... Um, so we get to this place where <clears throat> the restoration process has to start somewhere. And I say this to say this, man, the Bible talks about the swarming locust has eaten up stuff. The creeping locust has eaten up stuff. The, sh the stripping locust has eaten up stuff. And the groaning locust has eaten up stuff. And I love this word because God comes back and lets us know that whatever has come to rush you out, to decay you out, to, dent, to, to cause damage to you in some kind of way, to cause some kind of imperfection to where the thing that you once were no longer, you feel like you no longer have that value. You feel like you no longer look the part, right? Because through time in this life, man, you're going to take bumps and bruises. Through this time in life, you're going you're gonna to face some things that try to rush you out from the inside and try to make your heart grow cold. It's going to try to do stuff to devalue you. The enemy wants to devalue you you not only the enemy this world this carnal world wants to devalue you the things that you come against demons and devils it wants to devalue what you have and that's why it's important for us to understand restoration for us to understand restoration 
That's why everything that once robbed you from being this pristine thing to being this thing that was pleasing to the eyesight of God, to being this thing that sent the sweet smell and aroma unto the nostrils of God, being this thing that God said, I want to use this vessel to go out to the highways and byways, to go out and give your testimony so people could be overcomers, to go out and, and preach the gospel, to preach the good news. But something has happened that you no longer feel that you're valuable anymore. You have you have gotten to the place where you felt like you have you have decayed out. You have um you have lost in some kind of area your the, the part where you used to run at the highest capacity, you're no longer running anymore. You had the, the you had the dopest paint job but now you got a whole bunch of scratches and, and, and microfiber scratches and and uh, you got a lot of dents in it. And now it's chips and cracks and under the paint, it's, it's just rusting out. But thank God that he says that everything that was once stolen from you, everything that has been damaged on you, everything that has been stripped from you, everything that is causing you to groan, everything that is causing you to be in discomfort, I'm going to add it back to you. And not only that, I'm going to send this great army, which I send amongst you to be able to not only go out and, and, and keep you, but it's going to defend you as well, too. I love it. Let's understand this restoration process. Let's understand this thing, because once we understand this restoration process, we can see how God speaks and God's promises to restore us has always been there. It doesn't matter if you're lost or damaged. Thank God for that. I might be damaged right now. I might you 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 might be lost right now. You might be doubting. You might be dealing with fear. You might be dealing with something that is keeping you from being restored. But thank God that he gives us this promise. Thank God that he speaks. Thank God that he's a he uh he's God. Thank God that he's not a man that he has to uh that he has to repent and does he he and he doesn't tell a lie. He's a man of his word. All he needs us to do is act like he's telling the truth. Act like God is telling you the truth. Act like God has spoke his promises to you. Act like God has shown up before. Act like he has blessed you before. Act like he has done a miracle before you before. And watch how he restores you. Watch how he brings this masterpiece that he has created you to bring back to full restoration. Watch how he's brought you to be this machine, right, back to full restoration. Watch how he's bringing you back to this thing which he gave his life for and he considered priceless. But you have allowed this world to place a price on you. You have allowed the enemy to devalue you. You have allowed the things of this world and sin to rust you out. But thank God you don't have to stay like that because his promise of restoration it begins when we understand restoration. It begins when we acknowledge God's ability to restore us, God's willingness to restore us, and God's promises to bring the healing that we need that restores us back to what we once were. What I love about restoration is this. A lot of the times when you have something that was of value back then, if you restore it, it has a higher value now. Art from a long time ago, there's people, there's my, there's master craftsmen, there's 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 super super people, uh, 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 master artistries who could go back and repurpose artifacts and art and and all kinds of different stuff like it once was. But this is the thing about it is is what they do and why they're considered uh, elite and masters at that. It's because they make it look better than what it once was. Cars that are that are like um, highly vintage and sought after cars from the old time, they make them even better now. They could go and they could restore it. They could put better parts on it. They could put a better engine in it. They could put better headlights on it, better bells and whistles on it, and it's better than what it once was, but it still has the value of them, but even more now. Thank God for his ability to restore Thank God for his ability to, to go in into the deep places inside us where we have rusted out from the inside. That's why restoration starts from the, from the foundation. That's why restoration starts from the inside first because he needs to clean out what's in the inside of us, clean away the rust, 
right? Uh, uh, do, uh, 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 bring a different level of coat and, and, and bring it back to a solidified state, paint it up, fix it up. And now that's why God says it's important for you to deal with the inside first and the outside. Because if he could get the inside taken care of, the outside falls into place. That's why it's more important for you to have your soul right with God. Your soul be restored with God. Have the Holy Spirit resting inside you than looking the part. See, I could put a t-shirt on. See, I could put a suit on. I could, I, could, I, could, I could quote all the scripture. I know the right place to say amen. I know church protocol. I know church structure. I know how to serve. But it means nothing if your heart is not right with God and your soul hasn't been restored with God. But when you're restored with God and you're cleaned up from the inside and all the rust and sin and junk and decay is cleaned up, then God could do the outside stuff. Thank God for restoration and understanding restoration. The next one is this. Psalms 51, 10 through 12. The process of restoration. The process of restoration. Now we understand it. Now let's get the process. Which I touched on it a little bit. But Psalms 51, verse 10 and 12. Psalms 51, verses 10 and 12. Psalms 51, 10 and 12. And it says this. All right. It says this. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right and steadfast spirit within me. Don't cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your will and spirit. See, I love that David was a bad boy. You want to know why? Because David was like, man, deal with me, God. Deal with the inner me, God. Deal with the enemy, God. Have you ever heard what the biggest enemy is? Somebody tell me. What's your biggest enemy? What's your biggest enemy? Tell me. Somebody said yourself. Self. Your mind. Yourself. 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 I love yourself. Your biggest enemy is the inner me. The inside of you. The inner me is the biggest enemy that I'm going to face. The inner me is the biggest enemy I'm going to face. You want to know why? Because what is inside of you is what's produced on the outside. What's inside of you, the Bible says this, it's from what the, what's in the heart, the mouth speaks. What's from in the inside flows. So your biggest enemy, and this is why it's so important to be restored and to be renewed and to understand what David was talking about is cleaning me a pure heart, God. Create this pure heart of me. Restore this pure heart of me, God. Make me right. Make me steadfast, God. But within me, within my spirit, don't cast me away from your presence. A lot of us has a, have allowed the rust and the decay and the damage and the hurt and the bitterness and the depression and the anxiety to pull us away from the presence of God. Instead of coming to God and saying, God, all this junk and everything that has been eaten up, God, God, I need to put this in your presence, God. God, clean me up. Create in me a pure heart, God. God, return in me. Like, set me on the right path, God. Get me steadfast and anchored down inside your presence, God. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me, God. Because your Holy Spirit is what's renewing me. It's what's sustaining me. It's what's keeping me. It's what's guiding me. Restore my joy. Some of y'all have allowed the locust, the canker worm, and the pommel worm to steal your joy and your peace. And you wonder why you're being eaten up from the inside out. You wonder why your skin has grown callous and your heart has grown cold. Because you haven't dealt with your biggest enemy. And it's yourself. The enemy has been defeated. Yesterday, on, on Resurrection Sunday... God, Jesus Christ rose from the grave, conquered, right? Conquered the grave, conquered sin, conquered hell, conquered death. So the enemy's defeated. Your biggest enemy that you're facing is you. The biggest enemy that you need to deal with is you. That's how you're going to get your joy back. That's how your salvation is going to stay intact with God. And that's how you're going to be sustained. You need a willing spirit. Say, I got a willing spirit. I got a willing spirit. I have a willing spirit. 
I have I God, I understand restoration. I'm going through the process of rest restoration. God, I got a willing spirit, God. Renewing me. Restore my joy. Create me a clean heart, God. Renew me right. Place me in a steadfast position, God. Don't cast me away from your presence, God. Deal with the enemy and renew me. God's restoration, it involves the process of healing in the inside. This transformation it talks about. David prayed for a clean heart, a renewed spirit. We have to seek God to cleanse our heart, to guide us. Because the ultimate place that we want to press towards is his presence. And the only way that you get towards his presence is being renewed. The only way you get towards his presence is being restored. A lot of us could go and a lot of us got a lot of restoration to do. But thank God that he's willing to do it for you. See, a lot of people who restore things that had, that, that once had value, that are that is going to have even more value, they take a long process. They take a long process because they got to save up money. They got to make sure they order this part. They got to make sure they, they do this. They got to make sure they have the right paint. They got to make sure that this is compatible with this. But thank God that God is not like the world. Thank God that he is so supernatural. He is almighty. He is omniscient and omnipresence. That he is with me right now restoring me. And he is with you right now restoring you. So there is no wait. There is no waiting. Just be willing to give it all to God and watch him start restoring you from the inside out. Watch him start uh, uh, cleaning up your jack. Uh, uh, watch him start restoring your jacked up way of thinking to a new way of thinking. Watch him show you a different way to fight. Watch him show you a new way to love. Watch him deal with your bitterness and depression. And he'll start now. My process may look a little bit different from you. But it's all right. As long as you're willing to go through it. Just know that God's process is not like the world's process. When God takes you through it and when he gets you to the restored place, you can look back and you can be like, man, it doesn't even look like or felt like it's been 10 years. It doesn't look like or felt like that I was bound. I don't look like or smell like what I've been through. But God, thank you for restoration. Thank you for renewing me. Thank you for cleaning me up. Thank you for creating me a pure heart, God. Thank you, Father God, Father God for restoring me. Thank you for not being like people. Thank you for not being like this world. Thank you for being the almighty God. The promise of restoration. Jeremiah 30, 17. Jeremiah 30, 17. It says this. For I will restore health to you. Who needs some health? This is a pray. Hey, God's promise. Who needs their health restored? Who needs their health restored? God's dealing with some restoration right now. God's dealing with some restoration right now. God wants to bring somebody from the old to the new. God wants to take you back like you what, what you once were and even make you better now. Come on now. Who needs some healing? Who needs some restoration? This is one of God's promises. For I will restore your health to you. Come on now. I receive that in the name of Jesus. See, diabetes ain't going to keep me down because God said that he's going to restore my health to me. Hey, cancer ain't going to defeat me because God said he's going to restore my health to me. You know what? Hypertension uh, ain't going to keep me because God said he's going to restore the, the, uh, the diseases that we face ain't gonna keep me because God says he's gonna restore my health to me hey this mind this double mind it's not gonna keep me because God said he's gonna restore me to my health this mental health issue that I'm messing with right now it ain't gonna keep me because God is gonna restore my health and he will heal your wounds come on now the stripes that were placed on his back is gonna heal you see he took the lashes so you don't have to take them he took the he took the cuts and the bruises so he can heal you and make you whole come on now his word says and he's gonna heal your wounds says the Lord Lord, because they have called you an outcast, saying this is Zion. No one seeks her and no one cares for her. They call you the outcast. They call you the black sheep. They call you the messed up one. They call you the troubled child. They call you all these other names, but God calls you blessed and a child of his. And God says, because you belong to me, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to set you free and I'm going to deliver you. Thank God for his restoration power. Thank God for his restoring power. Thank God for him taking us from the old to the new. Come on now. God's promises to restore our health and heal our wounds, both physically and spiritually. 
This is the assurance that we should rest in. This is what we should remind ourselves of God's faithfulness. This should re uh, remind us of God's desire to bring us to a complete and wholeness. This should bring us. This should bring us a reminder that in every aspect of our lives, Jesus cares about you. Come on now. Number four, transformation that renews. Romans 12, 2. I promise I'm almost done. Romans 12, 2. And don't be conformed to this world any longer with superficial values and customs, but be transformed, progressively changed as a mature as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. Focus on the godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is and that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and his purpose for you. God's true restoration leads us to transformation. As we surrender to God's will and allow God to change our mind, uh, allow God to renew our minds, allow God to create in us a, a pure heart, allow God's word, God's will, and God's way to take precedence in our life, we begin to experience a kingdom perspective, a different way of looking at this life that we live. And once what was, what was once old, now had God has made it new. God has brought a newness to me. God has brought us to a oneness with Him, and God has brought us to complete completion with the purpose and the assignment that he has on each and every one of our lives number five is this so now we get to this and we understand that now we get to living in the reality of restoration see i want to tell you this before we get started on it living in the reality of restoration you don't bring up the list of offenses that you have to against people anymore you don't bring up, well, they hurt me. They should pay for it. But Jesus wants to heal you. And you have the fix to the issue that you need. But they called me this, but God calls you blessed. Well, they stabbed me in my back, but God took the wounds for you. But we have every excuse and I could do all of this and, and I'm bitter and I hate because uh, they lied to me and they did this. But God always told you the truth and he said that he loves you. So to truly walk in the reality of restoration, you could no longer live in the past. You have to live for the future and live for the kingdom now and to have a kingdom perspective on all things. You have to be you have to forgive and you have to set yourself free with forgiveness as well. It's not giving people a pass for what they did and how they hurt you, but it's for you to grow and it's to leave them in God's hands and understand that God is your vengeance. God is your vindicator. God is your justice. And God is going to work it all out for those that are called according to the plan and the purpose that he has for each and every one of us. So you got to walk in the reality of being restored, not in old news anymore, but walking in the good news now. No longer being bound by the past, but being set free by the future that God has for you now. Ephesians 4, 22 and 24. Ephesians 4, 22 and 24 says this, and this is the last scripture that regarding your previous ways of life, you put off your old self, completely discard of your former nature, which is being corrupted through deceitful desires and continually renew the spirit of your of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished metal and spiritual attitude. I'm sorry, an untarnished mental and spiritual attitude and put on a new self. The regenerated and renewed nature created in God's image, God-like, in the righteousness and holiness of the truth, living in a way that expresses that uh, expresses to God your gratitude for your salvation. You know how you live in restoration? Expressing the gratitude for God restoring you, for God transforming you, and for God renewing you. Now we have the steps to walk in restoration and being renewed, it's up to us to go through it. Jesus loves you. He cares about you. He is the potter and you are the clay. And you sit on the potter's table and God spins you around and it's God's hands on you, molding you. The imperfections he smooths out, the things he can't use, he throws to the side. The things that he needs to continue to add. See, when a potter is pottering the clay and making pottery, he constantly has that water there to keep it in the place where it goes. God, God has that living water for you that when he gives you that living water and it pours out inside you, God can continue to shape you and mold you easily. 
You just got to stay submitted to the hands of the Father. Stop just seeking him for things that you want, things that you think that you deserve, and start understanding that, God, if you don't do anything else for me, you have done enough. God, you have restored me. You have set my you have you have set me on my you have set me on solid ground, God. You, I no longer have this jacked up way of thinking. I have a new mind, God. God, I'm no longer bound by sin, but I'm set free by your grace and your mercy, God. I'm no longer an outcast and a reject, God, but I'm grafted in and I'm adopted into your uh, into your royal priesthood. God, you call me a child, you know me by name, and you went on that cross for me. And that's why it's enough for me to walk out and live in the reality of being restored and set free. I pray God's why I pray God's word bless you. I pray God's word encourages you. I pray that God continues to let you know that restoration is not just a one-time thing, but it's an ongoing thing. And this journey that we got in this walk and this fight and in this race, we got to grow and we got to be renewed. Embrace God's promises, trust God's process, and live in the reality that He's going to restore you to the fullness and to the Purpose, a purposefulness into the assignment that God has for you on each and every one of your lives. I love y'all. God bless y'all. We are closing our KMF Discipleship Bible Study. I'm going to go over really quick the steps, the process of restoration. Just so y'all can have them and we are closing out. God bless everybody that tuned in. God bless everybody that commented. I couldn't read all the comments, but we'll go back and we'll read them. God bless you. I appreciate all of the support uh, for our KMF Discipleship Bible Studies. Um, everybody that comes with your pen and paper, everybody that comes in, um, first off, is um, consistently serving the kingdom of God, uh, plugged into a local body, submitted to pastors and leaders, but also make a commitment over here as well, too, to grow with us, to come to Bible study. I know everybody went to church on Sunday, so to come back and to get a word again, I appreciate y'all's dedication uh, to the kingdom as well to continue y'all's commitment uh to the kingdom and y'all support that what we have going on over here in the kingdom music family and this uh ministry that god has given us so the first one is understanding restoration you got to understand restoration understand restoration that is joel chapter 2 verses 25 and 26 the process of restoration psalms 51 verses 10 through 12 The promise of restoration, Jeremiah 30, 17. Transformation and being renewed, Romans 12, 2. This fifth one is an important one. It's living in the reality of being restored, no longer living in the past, no longer being bound by those things. It's super important. You're not going to completely see restoration if you're living in the past, you're not going to see complete restoration if you're still holding on to all those excuses. You're not going to see restoration if you got a list of offense towards anybody. When you know that you got restoration is when you flow in 70 times 7 freely. When you remember it, you forgive easily. So that is Ephesians chapter 4 verses 22 through 24. Salute. God bless. God bless. Um, we are going to go to it. Uh, we'll get a couple people to give feedback. Um, Ernesto, uh, pick a couple of people. If you want to give feedback, raise your hand, please. Please. How you raise your hand? Um, everybody that's in the uh, in the Zoom, in, in the Zoom, uh, there is on the screen at the bottom. I want to say you could go to reactions and you could press the raise hand emoji. Go right here, and it says reactions, and you can press raise hand. Amen, amen. Oh, Lord. I just started pressing stuff. All right, let's get out of that. Uh, what's it called? Let me see. So uh, saved IGN. Unmute saved IGN. Can you hear me? Then yes, I'll sir. call on Emmanuel. Go ahead, my brother. Hey, how's it going, bro? Oh, we. Oh, hold up, man. Can you hear me? Hold on, give me a second. Can you hear me? I want to hear you. 
All right, go ahead, my brother. Hey, man, that's a, that's a great word. I love that word tonight because, um, you know, I've been locked up for 21 years. This, you know, this year made 21 years of me being locked up, man. And, man, when God first saved me, you know, when I was going through trial and everything, I, I man, I, you know, of course, now I was lying, trying to just save my skin. Yeah. And when I got to prison, man, like I accepted Christ into my heart. He started working on me, working on me. And I remember one night I was at Brushy Mountain. And um, that, that was the name of the penitentiary, Brushy Mountain. I was there, man, laying down. And, man, some just kept telling me, man, you did wrong. You did wrong lying in court. Mm. And you know, I was looking at just an extremely long time. So I got up, man, and, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just brush this little thought off. But I didn't know at the time that was the beginning of restoration. So when you start talking about restoration, it took me right back to that moment. And... You know, man, as that was as that process happened, about a week later, I said, I'm, I'm going to keep brushing this off. About seven days after that, I couldn't even sleep no more. I didn't sleep for four days. Wow. On the fifth day, I got on my knees, man, and I prayed, and I said, Lord, I'm going to write this judge and let him know that I lied. Mm. And I knew that by doing that, my destiny was now in the hands of Jesus. Because by on. doing that, I know that it was going to cut out all my appeals and everything. Man. So I said, Lord, man, I'm going to just trust your word. And I got down my knees and I prayed. And I, I told man, Heavenly Father, you know, I'm giving this to you. You know, my life is yours now. I'm Amen. trusting you. I said, Lord, I wrote the letter and I sent it off. Well, a few years down the road, about 10 years down the road, I said, yeah, I'm going to file an appeal just to see what happens. Yeah. And I filed, I filed an appeal. And when I filed the appeal, I, um, you know, it went out. And when they came back in, it told me, um, they didn't even tell me nothing. They sent me a copy of the letter oh, that wow. I had sent in all those years ago. Yeah. But praise God, you know, now 21 years later, you know, the Lord Jesus done opened up the doors for me to be able to go into, um, to go see the parole board this May 8th coming up. Come on, man. So, Come man, on, you man. know, now, you know, I got, you know, Pastor Brian, you send, I remember I told you guys the last time, Pastor Brian, you send, send those videos, you know, at the last prison I yeah. used to be at, you know, to encourage the brothers. We done started yeah. a ministry over there called Bilingual Come Christian Ministries. Come on. And, um, you know, so now, you know, man, just I got some people coming to stand up with me to, um, you know, to speak on my behalf. I got my family. God done restored my family members. Come on. Like, you know, man, he's moving. He's moving. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, man. He's Thank moving. You, Jesus. Amen. And I, and I thank the Lord, man, because because he's just opening new doors. And yeah. I'm just praying in Jesus' name, man. This is the time for full restoration. Come on. Come on. Believe hey, it. Hey, 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 man of God. How's it going, Brother Brian? Your internet, your, 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 your internet, B. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear up. you. Can you, can you hear me? I said you was at Brother Mountain? Yeah. You, you brushing your mountain? service, B, is messing up. Can, Give me a second. Can you hear me now? Uh, I, can, I can hear you. It's a little broken. Up. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, you, you, was at, you was at Brushy Mountain? I was at Brushy Mountain. In uh, Tennessee? Yeah, in Tennessee. Yeah, in Tennessee. Yeah, that's where I, that's where I, yeah, I was there. I, what year were you? What's that? I said, what year were you there? I was there in, in 2003, 2005. Man, hey, I, I stopped through Brushy, man. Uh, when, when I got my last case, uh, that's crazy you said that, man. Listen, man, I'm, I'm, I'm super, I'm super happy, man. Tapping in, and I'm super happy that, that you're letting God move in your life. But don't, don't get in trouble for no cell phone. You hear me? No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let yeah. me tell you something, why? Because, and, and I say this in love, because. If you're still sneaking, this is the truth. If you're still, if you're still being, like, if you're still doing the little things and not getting caught, when you get out, you'll you'll do the same out there. So you you gotta you gotta walk you gotta walk with integrity, man of God. And it it, it brings me joy that you're jumping on groups, but it's not worth it's not worth getting in trouble for because I want to see you come home. You hear me? Yeah. And that's that's true. That's kingdom. Me me telling you yeah, truth yeah. is kingdom. So, no, I received so it. I received little, it. If you're faithful with the little, you'll be faithful with the much. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Man, I love I love you, bro. I speak peace on you. You will be coming home. I know God God has a plan for your life, man. That's right. He preserved you. He preserved you these years to to bring glory to His kingdom. Be do Bible studies, push up some proverbs in there. Be prayer call. Everything you're doing, keep winning souls in there. But 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 by the way you walk with with leadership and integrity, man, it it speaks volumes to them, man. So be be faithful with the little, okay? Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you, my brother. Anything that we could do for you, let us know, bro. Uh, Amen. If you could put the um. If there's anything that we could like that y'all need or something, man, we, we could send some curriculum book, books or maybe some discipleship books too to help out. Like, man, we all about helping helping out our brothers, man, down there. Yeah, uh, are I you know. still in the Tennessee? You still I'm, you still in the I'm Tennessee? Still, system? I'm still in Tennessee. Yeah, the facility I'm at? at right now, um, the facility I'm at right now is called Hardeman County. They don't really Hardeman, have yeah, much here. Yep, yeah, I, I know where Hardeman is. Yep, yeah, I, I was in. I, I went from here, like Christian wise, like that. So it's real hard, you know. Sister Isbelia and Brother Tom is member at Northeast. We started the bilingual ministry yeah. out there. You remember that? Yeah, and, uh, bro. Hey, bro. I went, I went to Morgan County, and and then I uh, I think I went to the Northeast for a little while, man. That's when I heard you say, like, "Hey, those are the those." Was crazy. I'm sorry. His, hey, it, it, his, so good, his, his Wi-Fi. I walked, I, I, I walked. I walked amongst the lions in go. peace. My last bid, man. I I I literally allow 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 God to do something beautiful, man. And, and I, I witnessed God uh, heal hearts. I Come witness on. God or restore. So I, I'm glad that God has a soldier like you in there, man. Sure. Uh, and I just pray the perfect peace of Christ for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 His name. Amen. Hey, brother Trejo. I love y'all. Amen. Hey, hey, hey what's Trejo. up, soldier? God bless y'all. Just so you know, just so you know, I just want you to know, man, it's an honor to meet you, man. I love Amen. what you're doing, man. You inspire me. Man, it's it's, it's crazy. I, I also want to thank Pastor Fred, man, because he spoke to me tonight, man. I'm currently undergoing restoration. And I know I, I had to learn recently that it started from within. And, 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 yeah. and, and, and then I was my biggest enemy, so I appreciate I appreciate that sermon tonight. I also just want you to know, bro, I love your movement, man. Your movement is is it's reaching people that you have not the slightest idea that it's reaching, bro. It's reaching me, and and and, and I pray, I pray. I'm, and first and foremost, it's an honor to meet you, but also I pray for the day that I get out to be able to come and be a part of something like that, man. That's what that's what I that's. That's that's what that's what I want to put. Amen. That's what I want to dedicate my life to now. It's no longer Come on. It's no longer about the old me is gone. The old me is yep. gone. The new me is here now. Yeah. The new Come me on is now. Here now. I'm all about that. I just want you to know. I salute you. I love you, brother. Salute. And, uh, I love you guys. I love you guys. God yeah, to God be the glory. I love you guys too, man. Amen. I don't want y'all getting Amen. trouble. Those, Later. No cell phone, though, right? Hey, yeah, we still so soldiers, man. But we just soldiers for Christ, yeah. man. Come on now. Yeah. Soldiers Amen. for the kingdom, baby. Hey, God be the glory. I love y'all. Salute, fellas. God bless y'all. Appreciate y'all giving y'all feedback. God bless. Uh, unmute Manuel. Emmanuel. And fix your Wi Fi, B. Emmanuel, you there, brother? Hey, I'm here, my brother. Hey, man. God bless you. God bless. God bless you guys, too, man. Pastor Fred, you're amazing, brother. Glory to God. You know, I haven't been in here for a while, and, uh, I just want to give all thanks and glory to God for Amen. for this sermon tonight, brother Brian. Man, you man, you you you're reaching out to people, man. You know, all over the world, and it's amazing. You know, and you ain't Jesus, brother. You're just a messenger, and it makes more sense every day, man. It, it's mm -hmm. amazing how His word can just spread, bro, like that. Come on, now, isn't it? Amen. Like it, it, it's amazing, my brother. Like. Look at these! Look at these two gentlemen. In, still incarcerated, still getting touched in there. You know what I'm saying? It's just, man, God is so amazing, bro. Amen. And by the blood of Jesus, I'm just so grateful and thankful to still Amen. be here today. Cause I almost gave up so many times, man. And uh, full, just fully having a full restoration, man. Come on. By the blood of Jesus, man, is just, you know, it's unexplainable. You know, what I'm it's good. It's unexplainable, man. And I just want to thank everybody. Like, one thing, brother Brian, man, I've been trying to reach out, man. I don't, you know, I would like to to get into a uh, into some fellowship other than just this one. I don't know if you guys have anything yeah. else going on. Yeah. Um, but I would like to maybe make contact with brother Brian, Pastor Fred, one of you guys. Yeah. Reach out to me, and uh, I'd like to get in hit contact me, so I can just hit me up on Facebook. You know, if you're on Facebook, hit me up. Shoot me an inbox on Facebook. Okay. All right? It's, it's, it's my okay. name. It's Fred Mendez. You'll see me. 
Okay. All right. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Glory to God. Thank, thank, thank all you guys. Amen. God bless you. Guys, God bless you. you guys all have a good night, man. Yeah, have man. God bless you as well, too, my brother. Yeah, hit me up on Facebook. Just uh, shoot me an inbox, man. And then you can sign up for Discipleship Group even more, man, uh, on, on the website, on kingdommusic.org. Um, all right? Go on kingdommusic.org. You'll see the Discipleship tab. We got a lot of stuff to be involved in. Uh, let me see. Uh, G Child. What up, man? God bless you, man of God. Hey, God bless you. And, man, first of all, I want to thank God for Come on. for everything that he has done. Yeah. Everything that he is doing. And for you, Pastor Fred, and and um, and for Brother Brian, um, see you on April, bro. And uh, April 19th, you're coming to Yakima. Anyways, um, Amen. <laughs> I just wanted to share with you real quick, man. Holy Spirit hit me as soon as you started speaking. Talking about restoration, restoration. I have a, a a son that I haven't seen in 21 years, and I finally came in contact with him. Amen. But it didn't go the way that I thought it was. I know. There's, I understand. There's, there's a lot of hurt. <clears throat> That's 21 years. Yeah. And a lot of lies. Yeah. It's okay, bro. Yeah, I know that's hard. But I know I know God. And and the good thing that came out of that conversation that we had, uh, so many cuss words on his end, and me just just eating it. Just yeah. eating them. Yeah. Because in my mind I kept on hearing the Holy Spirit, stay humble. Yeah. Stay humble. So I allowed him and I said he, and I heard in my in, in the Holy Spirit speaking and saying he's hurt. Yeah. Remember, you were that too. You didn't have your dad either. But I know God's going to do something great. Come on. Because in my past, he's done it over and over again. Amen. And you're right. He is a God that should not lie and does not lie. That's right, my bro. He showed me. He didn't just say it, but he showed me time and time again. I've always been here for you. Yeah. Amen. Never I ain't never left you nor forsaken you. Come on. I know, bro. It's a hard one. So I'm, hold, I'm holding on to his promise. I'm holding on yeah. to what, what he said. And 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 you'll see in the chats, I, I commented. I said, God, man, yeah. you don't lie. Yeah. If I need you anytime, I need you now. I need you to, to fix that because I can't do that. Yeah. There's nothing I can do or say that's going to convince him anything, but God's got to move there. Yeah. Come on, my bro. God's got to move there. Yeah. And and when it happens, believe me, I'm going to I'm going to tell the world. Come on. Look what God did. Yeah. You know? It's going to happen. And I'm saying I say when it happens cuz yeah. I know it's going to happen. I know it is. We're believing it with you. It is. This, G. Brother G, I, I love you, bro. I love you. No. No, I know I know it hurts when when you want restoration and the other side, you know what they you got to understand, you got to just give them time to heal. And you may the process by, by, by taking the stripes like Jesus took for us, Lord. Remember the, remember the times that you pushed Jesus away. You're with cussing them out, man. You know, the, the yeah, resentment. Yeah. And he just took them stripes. And so right now in the name of Jesus, I just I just pray that God begins to, first off, uh, protect your heart and your mind, not to yes. discourage you. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes it doesn't go the way we want it to go, but that doesn't mean God's not working. Uh, by you posturing your heart right and listening to the Holy Spirit and knowing that it's coming from a hurt place, uh, you're allowing God to, to do things. You know, God can God can work on your son's heart better than anybody can. So I just pray healing over your son's heart and understanding of, of, of you now trying to make things right or you now yes, coming Jesus. and saying, hey, look, uh, I miss you, I love you. And I just know God can restore this, man. I've, I've had the same uh, relationship with my oldest daughter. And I think the same, the same words, the same, the, bringing everything up from the past that I did. And you know what? She was right. Everything I did, I, like I didn't, I didn't have Christ then, and I made some bad mistakes as a parent. And so today, I just pray that God begins to fix what is broken, fill what is empty, and that He strengthens your heart with empowerment of humility and love, and continue to reach out. Continue, even if, even if you get lash after lash after 
after cuss word after cuss word, just continue to take those lashes yes, the way Christ took them for you. Continue to show humility and love, and show a consistency in reaching out because I love you, son, and I wanna I wanna be in your life, son. And um, and I, and I know God will fix it, and I know God will heal his heart. So I just pray his perfect will over yes, your life right Jesus. now. Wholeness and health in the name of Jesus, man. I love you, brother G. Amen. Amen. I love Amen. you, man. Hey, and one more thing. On that on that same day, I was able to contact my other son that his mom took him two mm -hmm. years ago. I yeah. raised him, though. Yeah. The first half of his life, his mom wasn't around. I raised him. Yeah. And then we went to court afterwards and stuff. And because I was working too much, they said, well, we're going to give him to her. So... She, they gave her full custody, whatever. She had the the right to go ahead and just take him, and she did two years ago. So I haven't talked to him in two years. Well, that same day when I was calling out to God about moving, he allowed me to contact him, and we kept in contact, and we got we got in contact that day, and we've been keeping in contact since. So he's showing me that look, I can do this. Yeah. Let me work on this. Come on. So I'm saying, like anybody watching, anybody hearing this, like he will do whatever it is that you need done. Yes. He ain't gonna lie about it. Come on. Like, like you know what I mean? He's moving. Just gotta allow him to do it. There's some things that have a lot more restoration needs to be done on it than other things. It's a different process. You know? And so, yeah. like I was saying, like I was saying, uh, Pastor Fred, that that Holy Spirit was speaking as soon as you were talking about the restoration of of old cars. I was like, man, I'm just trying to hold him back because it's crazy, man. You you, you nailed it, like. And no pun intended, but you you nailed it, you know? I mean, there's restoration that needs to be done. There, there's a lot of wear. There's a lot of rust. There's a lot of years that need to be, you know, was, uh, scraped or, or sanded down and, 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 you know, to get to a smooth. And then you can start primary and you can start layering the stuff, you know, at the, your foundation. And then you, before you know it, you're going to, you're going to have a crystal clear paint job. You yeah. know what I'm saying? A drip. Like Come on. <laughs> Come on, brother. God bless you, you know? man. Yeah, we just pray God God's bless, endurance man. and strength and peace over you, my brother. And uh, you continue to allow God to do what he needs to do. We move in time. God moves in eternity. Yeah, when yeah. God releases it, yeah. bro, it comes right on time. It, it comes yeah, right yeah. exactly when we need it, bro. So uh, be encouraged. Never in a hurry, brother. but always on time. Come on now. Come on. Hey, God bless I you. Can I encourage him real Go quick? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, brother, so so you got to remember, right, I spent, 15, I spent 15 years locked up, man, and and I went through the same thing with all my kids. I got a 22-year-old, a 19-year-old, a 17-year-old, and a 14-year-old, right? That um, I was gone a lot of their life, right? My daughter, her whole life, practically, I just... Um, and it still ain't completely restored. You know, it took us a lot of years that, that we tore them down by being gone, by our actions, our drinking, what, whatever it may be, right? It took a lot of years, just like them cars, right? They take a lot of beatings. And... and um, I still don't have the relationship that, that I would love to have, right? Because when they do come over here, they see the relationship that I have with my kids now. And I know in their mind, they're like, well, what about us? Why weren't you like that with us? Why didn't you do that with us? You know, and, and you know, my 17 year old son now, right? He's like, I, I heard him say some things like, like to my kids now, like, man, that's not supposed to be your room. That's supposed to be my room. Oh, like man. and and them are hurtful things, right? Because yeah. man, I know I left my kids, right? But I'll tell you one thing, man. Whenever you come to to terms and to peace with God and knowing that God is the only one that can restore, just like us, God is the only one that has restored me, that has restored yourself and anybody else on come this on. live. Yeah, it took him time. It took him a lot of time for me, man, because I ran for <laughs> years. Right? Yeah, it took me a lot too. Little, he's chipping it off. He's chipping it off. He's chipping it off. But one thing that I can I can tell you this and I can in, in, encourage you in this, the Bible says to be still and know that he is God. Right. Let him do the things, man. Every once in a while, I reach out and say, hey, man, I love you. Or, hey, you know what? I'm thinking about you. You know, uh, and, and let them let them know. Right. And even if they bro, bro, like my kids don't text back at all. They don't answer my phone calls. But that doesn't mean that I, that, that doesn't mean that I'm going to give up. Come on. Yeah, right. That doesn't mean that yeah. I'm gonna stop because you know what? The Lord has never stopped pursuing me. Mm. Even in like how we started in the beginning, even when I fail now, He never stopped pursuing me, and He continues to just pursue us. The more and more the mistakes that we make, He goes and He says, "Man, son, I love you. Hey, son, I love you." And even though we talk to walk away from Him and turn turn our back on Him, He's like, "Son, I love you, daughter, I love you." And that's how that's how we need to know. We need to be like, "Look, yes. man, hey, let Him heal." They're, they're healing, right? All the cuss words, that, they're letting that out. They're letting the hurt out, right? Like when you go to church and you go to the altar and you just let it out, man, I'm letting God I'm letting God have all my hurt and all my pain. They may not know the Lord, so what do they do? They're, they're letting you have it, right? And now you take it to the Lord and be like, Lord, heal their hurt. 
heal their heart, you know, heal their mind, reveal yourself to them, right? Begin to pray for them, right? Because you know they're hurt. So I just want to encourage you with that, man. Just continue to press forward. I've been out of the penitentiary six years, bro, and I still don't have that relationship, but I know this. It took it, it took myself over 30, 31, 32 years to finally say, man, God, I, I receive you into my life. God, yeah. God, do do have your way in my life, God, because I made a wreck of it. And little by little, man, he's giving me so much back. Amen. He, little by little, he shows me, hey, son, I love you. It may not be the way that you want it, but I love you. Yeah. That never changes the fact that he loves you. Amen. And, and just walk with that, bro, that he loves you and pray for your children. Amen. 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 I love it, man. We are closing, man. We're going to close with Jonte Gonzalez. We're going to close with Jonte. And I'm going to allow him to give some words. And then we are closing. Um, Let me see. Uh, And Drew, get ready to pray us out as we close with Jonte. Yes, sir. God bless you, my brother. God bless you too, my brother. So, yeah, I love what you said about restoration because, I mean, recently I've been going through that. You know, for a long time, I've been I've been walking with God for going on a year next month. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, about a month ago, I was backsliding for a good little while. And uh, during that time, you know, the devil was really just trying to, to put me down and, and just trying to feed me all of these lies, you know. And he was just trying to, like, everything that God had told me in the beginning, he was trying to reverse that. And, uh, you know, even when I was in that, I was still just telling God, like, I need you to guide me. I need you to help me, you know, restore me. Just like you were saying, like, you hit it spot on. And you know what I'm saying? I, I just kept asking him that until it got to the point where, where God finally bring me back from that place. But mm-hmm. when I was in, the devil was throwing so many things. Like, three of my friends ended up getting shot right before, uh, right before New Year's Eve. Yeah. One of my friends ended up dying. The other friend that got shot, he was in the hospital. He's a little bit slower now because yeah. he got shot in the head. And another friend died more recently. He was only 15 years old, and it was right before his 16th birthday. Wow. So all of these things happened at, at one time, and it, it brought me into a real deep depression. But God was teaching me a lot of things during this time. And what, what he was kind of showing me is that that restoration that, even though, you know, I went through these things, even though I was doing this stuff, he brought me straight back from there. And as soon as I came back, he told me to go and preach. And I was like, you're going to use me. Mm-hmm. You know, I went to church one day and I put my head in my hands and I was just like, God, what do I do? And I heard him speak to me saying, you're chosen for such a time as this. Yeah. You know, the altar call happened. I went up there. I was the first person up there because I knew I needed him. Like, I needed him. That I was like, if this isn't real, then I don't know what to do. Yeah. And the preacher came up, and, and, and he put his hand on my back, and he he said the same exact thing that God had told me when I was sitting down. So I knew it wasn't no lie. He said, you're chosen for such a time as this. Come on. You know, recently, God, God has, you know, continued to show me that a lot of us want the blessings. A lot of us want to get out of this this hard time, but we don't have the patience to endure. Come when on. God says it will to the end, that's that's when we will be saved. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm only 16 years old, but God saved me. You know, he He encountered me when I was alone in my room when nobody else was there. Come so on. it was like, you know, the devil that's trying beautiful. to feed me lies. Yeah. That stuff, I knew, I knew it was capped the whole time. Man. You know. That's dope. Yeah, that's good. I love it, bro. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, man. Just seeing you and hear you, man. I can see a lot of myself in you. Uh, although we look alike right now, you probably could grow hair a little bit. You probably could still uh, get a little weight on you. But uh, I can see I can hear a lot of myself in you and see a lot of myself in you as well, too, man. And um, there is a plan. And, you know, what the, the Bible says this, man, don't let nobody despise your young age. You know, uh, Timothy was a young preacher. Uh, Paul was just teaching him. Right. And he was a teenager and uh, God set him up. But there was, there was a process that he had to go through. And it was a learning process. It was a discipleship process. It was a growing process, a discipline process. So when they departed, when Paul departed, he could continue to go forth and do what he needed to do. So right now, man, God has given you, man, this awesome ministry that you can have, man. This generation is lost. 
uh this generation uh is you know they don't care nothing about jesus right now they only care about their money they 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 their talents and and whatever they want bro but uh you got such a beautiful opportunity to go and reach and preach to the um to the young generation and um to to, to, to allow god to use you as a vessel to go and um win some souls over for the kingdom man so 16 years old man is 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 a is a beautiful thing for you to come on here and into fellowship and uh, to, um, you know, speak and to get on here and, uh, you know, understand, man, a lot of, you, you'll you be surprised a lot of 16 year old, man, they don't, they don't, they won't speak like you or talk like you, man. Um, cause they're only caught up in what they want, bro. So I pray God's complete, uh, provision over your life and whatever assignment he has you on, whatever God is, uh, facing you towards, man, that you, that you be, that you be the instrument that's in God's hands, man. And wherever he aims you towards that you go, bro. And wherever he pushes you to, man, that you press into his presence as well, man. So, uh, God bless you, Jante. Uh, we love you, man, and hope well, to see you still around. I, uh, I, I don't mean to, you no, know, go ahead. Uh, um, but I wanted to share this with y'all. Um, you know, uh, literally this morning, I was going through a lot of spiritual warfare because I'm coming out of this season where I was backsliding. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I went to sleep, you know, in the middle of the day. I started feeling very, very tired for no reason. I ended up going to sleep, and when I went to sleep, I had a dream of me walking down the street, and I saw a woman in my dream that I had remembered that I had evangelized her. Now, in real life, I don't know at all who this woman is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But in my dream, I knew who she was, so I talked to her, and she was like, well, I don't know if I know you. She started talking to me. She asked for my number, and when she got close to me, she gave her phone to me, and everything got real dark. I felt this really dark presence but I wasn't scared. And she began to pull her shirt down and, and take out her, her breast. And I was really confused. She started chanting something in my ear. And when I woke up, I was so happy because I knew the spiritual war was happening for a reason that, you know, the devil knew that the hold that he had on me with that lust, that Jezebelic spirit, that's what I knew it was, that that hold that he had on me, he no longer had because Jesus has been restoring me and and yeah. finding me you know taking yeah. me through the fire just like he would a sword and you know when I came out of that he told me to start praying and I prayed like I never had before I entered into this vision in the spiritual realm I could see myself in the third person and there was this white building that I was in and Jesus was in front of me and I walked up to him and I gave him a hug when I stepped back I seen legions of angels behind Jesus and all he told me was, at your command, they go. And he said, do you want me to release them? And I told him, yes. When I told him, I seen all of them rushing. And I seen this white garment that Jesus had on turned into this glowing, beautiful gold garment shining. So I want y'all to remember, I want to encourage each and every one of y'all, no matter how old, no matter how young you are, God can use each and every one of us and remember we have the ability and the authority through the blood of Christ to command angels at our side to war in, in the spirit. You know, the devil tried taking so many things from all of us, but now it's time to take it back for the kingdom. Yeah. Amen. Come on, bro. I love it. Amen. Keep the passion and keep the fire, my brother. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, Amen. sir. God bless you, family. And, uh, what's up, brother? No, what's y'all could uh, stay with me. I, I do music and stuff. You know, I would love to talk to y'all about that. Uh, but that's on y'all all time. I, I'll keep coming in here and, you know, talking to y'all about it. You know, uh, just... Hit me up on the side. Saying? Hit me up on Facebook. Yeah. Well, Or Instagram, whichever one you got. It's Fred Mendez on both. Ernesto, text him my number. Ernesto. Yes, sir. Text him my number. I got you. I'll text him the number. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. I love y'all, man. Um, Bye. we are closing out. Um, unmute Drew. Is Drew, where you at, Drew? Let me zoom in. Uh, unmute. Uh, Edgar. Let Edgar pray us out. Y'all hear me? Amen, Eric. God bless you, brother. God bless y'all too, brother. Man, Amen. I'm excited about this. A little nervous because this is my first time, but it's all right. You know, Let's I, get I, believe, it in. I believe, you know, I, and I can relate to a lot of brothers on here. Come you on. know, the brother, brother G Child, about his situation. And, um, you know, the brother, you know, we're just 
but I know God's his time God's time is perfect. Come on. And uh, he's he's working through that restoration. Yeah. And man. uh but I want to pray as out. I'll go ahead and take Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to fellowship with us, Father God. Well, we invite your Holy Spirit to take control of our minds and, and help us to walk as chosen, chosen child, Father God. We thank you for for sharpening us, Father God. We thank you for giving us this word today, Father God. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, that you pinch our you pinch our hearts and, and pinch our soul, Father God, to carry out your word, Father God. In love and in compassion, Father God, help us to be soldiers for you, Father God. I plead the blood of Jesus over our families, Father God, each and every day, Father God. Help us to, to just overcome anything that comes our way, Father God. We we trust in you and we glorify your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 God bless y'all. We love y'all as we are closer, man. Unmute everybody. Let them say a uh, 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 shout out hallelujah and praise God. God bless y'all and we love y'all. We will Amen. see y'all God next keeps, uh, Monday. Pastor Brian. Lift it as well, y'all. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.